Well, hello shooters. This is another video from Dark Spectre 100. This video, this video I'm going to show you how to select the right bullets if you are a reloader, or I'm going to show you how to select the right ammunition before you take the long range uh, shots. For long range shots, every ballistic uh, software is going to ask you for the ballistic coefficient, which is going to be a number every provider of ammunition or bullets is going to classify is going to use to classify their bullets from the optimum to the less quality one. Uh, the ballistic coefficient is a number that generally is going to give you the quality of the bullets, the how well it's going to be able to overcome the cross winds uh, from the side. This is a number that is not going to be absolute and constant. It's going to be generally affected by the muscle velocity. Do not expect the same muscle velocity from the provider if you are using a barrel. As an example, a 308, if you are using a 20 inch hunting barrel versus a 26 26 inches uh, PRS or long range uh, competition or sniper grade 26 inches or do not expect the same ballistic coefficient performance on a bullet or that is for a 223 or 5.56 on a 16 inches versus a 20 inches long barrel so it's going to be pretty much muscle velocity uh, affected. Some other factors that are going to be affecting your ballistic coefficient it's going to be the conditions in the place where you are taking the shots. The atmospheric condition is going to be your pressure, your altitude, your temperature, and extreme range is going to be also your uh, humidity. When we talk about the ballistic coefficient, it's going to be represented by the BC on the box of the providers. Generally speaking, the higher the number, generally speaking, the better the quality of the bullets. It means it's going to have a flatter trajectory. It means it's going to be less affected by crosswind and it means it's going to preserve the muscle velocity at extended range versus the regular uh, bullets and it's going to preserve the impact, the stocking power upon impact. There are two general trajectory models. In front of me I have the G1 and I have the G7. They were both created uh, in different times. G1 over here is going to have a lower numbers, uh, G7 is going to use a higher uh, numbers. G1 was created around the 1880, uh, while G7 is, it is more modern. It was created in 1940. So either one is going to be what you're going to input in your ballistic software before you get your final ballistic table for your long range engagement. Uh, G1, which is this one over here, it applied mostly for uh, the Spitzer bullets, the one with not so bow tail. The G7, it, was, it applies more and it matches more the modern bow tail hollow point bullets, the long range bullets or the sniper quality bullets. The G1 is going to need more uh, throwing, more verification and more confirmation of what you get at the range, real life performance versus what the ballistic software table is telling you. So that's, that's what throwing consists of. When you confirm what you get in real life versus what the ballistic software is going to tell you. Uh, G7, since it is a more modern, is going to need a less throwing itself. However, the majority of the provider of bullets uh, for reloaders and the majority of providers for match tray ammunition for people who buy match tray on the market, the, most of the uh, ballistic coefficient is going to be given on a G1. G1 is going to be most commonly available when, available when compared uh, to G7, as I stated before the ballistic coefficient for a G1 trajectory model is going to be higher when compared to the G7 ballistic coefficient trajectory model. So please do not cross values if you are using a ballistic software and it's asking you the G1 corresponding a ballistic coefficient for a bullet, do not put the G7, otherwise the extended range is going to be really low and if you have a G7 a software and it's asking you for the G7 corresponding ballistic coefficient value, do not put the G1, which is going to be way higher, and it's the table is going to give you that you're going to be capable, capable of engaging target 2,000, 3,000 yards, which is absurd. Uh, next, I'm going to give you a sequence of uh, different bullets. It's going to be like pictures, so you can compare the different weights, the different shapes, uh, so you can get your own conclusion. This is all I have to show for you today, my friends. As usual, thank you for, so much for your time. If you like this video, if you learned something new, give it a like, subscribe, share it among your friends. Thank you so much for your time. One more time and God bless you all.